Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the GRE quantitative math review lessons. Today we will be covering word problems. Um, word problems uh, are very very common on GRE, you would see a handful of these on each section and they cover a very wide area of concepts. So you'll see word problems on geometry, on algebra, fractions, everything that you can imagine as far as you know, math is concerned. So, so let's look into how can you go about uh, doing word problems. So um, I follow a three-step methodology when attacking word problems and it's pretty simple. The first is that you want to break down the problem into small chunks. So break into the small chunks, you know, easy, small bites that you can chew. Second is to translate, okay? So the word problem is usually in English. Uh, there's some math terms in there. But you want to take that, uh, that wording and translate into mathematical terms, okay? And lastly, you want to be sure exactly what is being asked. This is very, very critical because many times people will understand what the problem is about, but they will make sometimes careless mistake and assume something else is being asked, where else something else was being asked. Okay. All right, so here's our first word problem. Uh, maybe it's a good idea if you want to try this on your own, uh, pause this video for a while and then look at uh, my explanations. Probably more helpful that way. All right, so Lindsay is trying to collect all the cards in a special commemorative set of baseball cards. She currently has exactly one fourth of the cards in that set. Okay, when she gets 10 more cards, she'll have 10 one third of the cards. How many cards are in the set? Okay, so, so I'll here invert the three step process, and, and the reason being that I know right away by the last sentence what the question is asking for, right? How many cards are in the set? So I want to know the total number of cards in the set. So good strategy to start in the word problem is to say whatever the thing is being asked for, which is cards in the set here, let's say that's x. Okay. All right, so we have what we are looking for. Let's look at the other parts of the problem. First sentence is just telling, okay, she's collecting some baseball cards. Um, second sentence says that Lindsay currently has exactly one-fourth of the cards in that set. So her current situation is that she has one-fourth of the cards, okay? So this sentence, one-fourth of the cards. Now, going back to our fractions lesson, um, I hope you remember how to translate off. Off means that you are just multiplying. So one fourth times the cards, and we said cards is x, right? The total number of cards is x. So basically, when you translate this from English to math, this means one fourth times, and instead of writing times, I'll just write x in brackets like this. So this is the number of cards she currently has. All right. So that's the translation of the second sentence. I'm moving on. When she gets ten more cards. Okay, she'll then have one third of the cards. Again, you have this one third of the cards, which would be just one third X, right? Okay, so now this information, the three pieces of information, one fourth of the cards, 10 cards, one third of the cards, all right? So this, all this has to come together in an equation like this. So basically the equation would uh, be like, okay, you have one, she has one fourth of the cards, right she's gonna add 10 more cards to that okay and when she gets 10 more cards the, the problem says she will have one third of the cards so basically what it's saying is that when you add one fourth of the cards and 10 cards what you end up with is one third of the cards okay 
So this is the translation process, right? Where you take English words, translating into mathematical terms. Usually word problems will end up giving you an equation that you have to then solve for your unknown, which in this case is x, the total number of cards in the set. All right, so let's see how to solve this equation. Well, you have two fractions, um, and the easiest way to deal with fractions is to have all the fractions on one side. So I'm gonna take one fourth of x, take it to the other side where the whole thing would become negative. And just to conserve space, I'm gonna start from the end here on the left. Um, so I'll have 10 equals one third of x minus one fourth of x. Okay, uh, <clears throat> and I'll just rewrite this. One third of x I can also write as x over three. So I'm just multiplying the numerator one with x, and same with four. Now this looks, you know, more manageable to me. I just have two fractions that I have to separate. Right, so use the common denominator rule for three and four. A common multiple is 12, right? and 12 goes into three by four. Three times four is 12. So, four is your factor that you have to multiply the numerator of the first fraction with. So, you have four times x minus 12 goes four times three is 12. So, three is the factor that you have to multiply the numerator of the second fraction, right. So you end up with 10 equals 4x minus 3x will give you only 1x over 12. And moving this up over here again, 10 equals x over 12. Um, I'll take the denominator on the right side, move it to the left side. So here's dividing x. So when it moves to the left side, it will multiply x. So basically my x comes out to be 120, right? So a bit of algebra, but the trick here was to come up with the equation that you could solve for, right? So that means that you have to translate your word problem from English to math terms.